Welcome to an almost tropical EMBN set this week, and we will be rocking it big time. You know, talking rock stars on e-bikes, and not me. <laughs> we're looking at a quick look at uh, 2019 Trek Powerfly. Nice. And we're talking about that 25 kilometers an hour limit again. Is it too slow? I think so. What? <laughs> Let's get in there. So who's this rock star we're talking about, Steve? Forget the rock star. Where the hell have you been? I've been seen for ages. No, busy riding in cross country and all sorts. Not much e-bikes actually recently. Right. Well, in your absence, yeah. uh, have you seen the news that Tim Comerford, uh, formerly Rage Against the Machine and more recently Prophets of Rage, has been ripping around California on his specialized Levo? I just love bikes working on bikes and riding bikes and thinking about bikes and going to sleep at night with bikes on my mind is the way I live. My name's Timmy C. I uh, am a bass player and I also ride bikes. And I think I ride bikes maybe more than I play bass. And I sort of thank bikes for enabling me to have a career that's as long as mine has been. Cool video, yeah, riding Malibu Hills. Absolutely, I nice. mean, he, he is a, he's a veteran of mountain biking. He started yeah. mountain biking back in 1993, so he's been on some big trips. He actually had to cancel a tour once because he broke his wrist mm. on his mountain bike. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about this guy before actually riding yeah. mountain bikes. Makes you think what other stars ride mountain bikes. You know, Harrison Neil Ford. Donahue. Harrison Ford! He rides a mountain bike. <laughs> I think he's an e-bike type of guy, do you reckon? Really? What's the spaceship, Millennium Falcon? Talking spaceships, nice. did you know that Tim Comfort's dad actually worked on the space shuttle? I didn't know that. How would I, how would I know that, Steve? <laughs> well, you do now, Don. New bikes. Trex have announced their 2019 Powerfly yeah. with the LS, so mm -hmm. much more integrated than the old bikes. More colours, too. That's going to be key for a lot of people. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's a tried and tested geometry on this bike. Right. Yeah. I actually rode this bike in Garda Festival. I know, that's right. That yeah. was one of the early versions, and the geometry is absolutely bang on on this okay. bike. So, with the RIB, regional, um, removable. Sorry, removable integrated battery, it's a far neater design on this bike, and so, it's so easy to... Bosch system. Bosch system. Tell you what, I noticed on the, the bump for this, or the press yeah, release, yeah. is the way the battery comes out is super nice, yeah. but it's got a key, and I'm not massively keen on keys. You I actually don't... like the specialised version, which is an Allen key. You don't need keys. Look, we're going to have a closer look at this bike next week, but yep. there's some nice features on it. Um, uh, four pot piston, sorry, four piston calipers. Yep. Uh, heavier duty tyres. Now the old Trek Powerfly did suffer from thin sidewalls, okay. which was it's good to see the Trek have ad uh, addressed this. As you mentioned, carbon fibre now as well as aluminium. Nice premium bike that. Any other ed pieces of note on this bike? So I saw SRAM release the NX Eagle groups out a yeah. couple of weeks ago now, but it's nice to see e-bike manufacturers picking up on it. So it goes on your normal Shimano free hub body. Yeah. It's none of that 12 speed, it's 11 speed. So Closer get, ratio cassette. Yeah, you've got an 1150 rather mm. than a 1050 and you've got 11 gears. So. Do you know what I like about this as well is the fact that, you know, e-mountain um, e bike gears are probably high high turnover. You're going to be replacing them quite a lot. Steel set. So it's a lot cheaper. It's about 110 euros yeah. for that cassette on that bike. Yeah. Like it. Uh, let's move on to some uh, local action. Got Jack Strutt from Ribbersford Woods up in up in the Midlands. Now he hit yeah. a gap for the first time on his e-bike. Mm, he's he's only jumps. 15 years old. You must know this gentleman. I done. last rode there when I was about 15 years old myself. <laughs> good spot though. Yeah, good work, Jack. Good work. Keep it going. Exciting news this week, we've got a giveaway of three POC helmets. We've got a Coronair, an Octal Spin, and a Tectal Spin. So get involved, the link to the competition will be in the description down below, or should be floating around on screen now. Three helmets to give away, there'll be a simple question. Get involved. Right, it's time for feedback this week, and we've had an incredible amount of feedback when it comes to the question, is 25 kilometers an hour too slow when it comes to the restriction on your e-bike motor? Obviously, it depends from country to country what the limit is, uh, and we've had a lot of conflicting uh, arguments with a lot of people agreeing and disagreeing well, over it. It's a controversial it. topic, this one. It's a huge, huge topic. I mean, from my point of view, Don, I think if you ride the right tracks, Mm. then you don't actually get to that 25k limit anyway, especially if you're going to pretty steep climbs. If you ride in fire roads and tarmac roads, I know I've said it many times before, Yeah. but then you ride in the wrong place. Well, let's be honest about this. I've ridden a de-restricted bike and a restricted bike, mm -hmm. and I would say for certain things, so hitting jumps is a big one, where good, if you good hit point, a limit, good point. you can't, it's really hard to get quick enough to hit that jump. I don't hit jumps. So you might want <laughs> five miles an hour, not even that, five kilometers an hour, more yeah. for that. Yeah. To be honest, 
I've re-restricted everything I own, and mm -hmm. it's like I say, it doesn't so make responsible these days, Dan. I am, aren't I? <laughs> but everyone's tried it, I would think. A lot of people watching will have tried it, but yeah. there's definitely... Don't be trying this at home. No. Anyway, I've got a couple of obs observations and a question. The mm -hmm. first observation is the issue is not speed, it's the speed at which the assistant stops. Right. So you can obviously go faster than the assistant speed. Yeah. Second observation is the car speed limits have been low to 20 miles an hour in a lot of places in the UK, it's, as it's deemed to be much safer. However, bikes are limited to 50 miles an hour. So mm -hmm. his questions are... What's the question, Don? <laughs> if speed limit can't be argued as a basis for assistance to limit, what is its basis? What's the basis for the limit to the 25k? Who, what's, who's we made don't, it up? We don't know this, do we? We do not, I mean, we do not know the answer to this question. If there's people in the industry who know the answer, or people not in the industry, please let us know. But That's who we need to ask, Steve. But then, that. you know, time and speed is a man-made concept, right? So... <laughs> He also goes I'd, on to say, in the USA, the assistance limit varies across the states, but it is, it's yeah. higher than the UK. It is higher. 20 and 30 miles an hour. I've not heard 30 miles yeah, an hour before. Yeah. But this one, for, you know, yeah, so, um, don't know the answer. Really, really sorry. But this from Gibby Kerwin, or is it Kerwin Gibby? Um, he thinks that uh, 25k is plenty. Where do you draw the line? You know, when does it, when do people decide? Oh, well, let's True. make it 30. Let's make it 40. Let's make it 50. There's a lot of a lot of this is about blokes wandering around going, yeah, have you de-restricted your bike kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? There is a lot of that. You know, and like it comes goes back to mopeds. Oh yeah, I've made my moped 55 cc instead of 50. It's not legal, Steve. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, where where does it stop if you make those changes? So, I don't know. I don't know either. Don, nice to see you back. You've been on your travels. Where nice. on earth have you been? I have been riding my normal bike around an awful lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, brings us on to this week's in-depth topic, which is where is the ultimate place to ride your e-bike? Now, I guess this differs from person to person and from country to country, but there seems to be a tendency for a lot of people on e-bikes to do a climb and then a descent, rather than maybe do a ride in which the ground is continually changing, like yep. short punchy climbs, little descents, and because we simply haven't got the tracks made for that, right? So where is the best place, where's oh, the ultimate place such to a, ride? I think, especially with e-bikes, there's such a broad, different range of people that ride them. Exactly, from like 14 to 84, right? So the, what I use it for is for winching myself up and bombing out runs, mm -hmm. and I love it, especially when it's muddy and horrible, and your average speed yeah. on an enduro bike would be horrendously slow. Yeah. You jump on that and bang it, loads of riding, but, yeah. Did 100 miles on my cross country bike last week. Yeah. Got into the South Downs Way, so it was completely mellow riding. Yeah, yeah. I saw a, a lot of e bikes, probably half a dozen e bikes, with people using them completely differently to how I would. So they're just riding really nice scenic trails, nothing technical about it, but they're just winching themselves up and over into lovely spots. Yeah, I and mean, that makes sense. Off road. You, you know, we went to the Shimano e bike experience in the Dolomites the other day. Sorry, yeah. sorry, couldn't make it. Sounds nice. <laughs> so, what we did there is we actually climbed up the mountain all morning conserving yeah. our battery then we got to a lunch stop in a mountain hut yeah charged the battery up a little bit and then spent the rest of the afternoon descending that's what i it really was, would like to do actually it was absolutely amazing aosta valley you must have been there over your years of yeah. journalism um, yeah i can imagine these all sorts of resorts in the middle of nowhere you don't need a ski lift anymore you can bomb mm. your way up find some amazing trails. exactly i mean you're talking about aosta valley not far from there is the matterhorn probably one of the most iconic mountains in yeah. the whole of the world Do you reckon Europe? summit on the well, I tell you, what you can do. You can actually catch a train halfway up the Matterhorn. Oh, okay. And I was thinking, what an epic ride is it from from uh, Zermatt to Verbia through those passes? Yeah. And I think that's another great thing about e-bikes is maybe going to those out of way, out of the way sort of hidden valleys and things like yeah. this. But also, what I was thinking is, I actually like now. I'm not into resorts myself. Right. But then the thing with resorts is you can actually get a chairlift and go even higher again. Yeah. But Personally, I like to go to those real villages where there's a mm. population lives there year round and you get a bit of a local taste. Oh, and I say, I've done it at Les Arc, where you get the highest lift and then you hike for an hour and then you ride the most amazing trails. Mm. An e-bike opens up to that, but you've mm. got to get the bike on the lift as well. What about further afield, Don? You've yep. done Andy's Pacifico. Uh -huh. Imagine doing Andy's Pacifico on an e-bike. Unbelievable. And I know the guys there are into e-bikes. Yep. The organisers, they're into e-bikes. Eduardo and the boys. Well, the future is bright, and I'm sure the future is going to be very varied for e-bikes as well. But what about elsewhere? India. 
Huh? N- never even considered I it. Think, I think for me, the ultimate place is going to be something like India. Okay. Like cruising around the towns. But um, yeah, let us know your thoughts on where you'd like to go e-biking, where your favourite places are. Uh, I know we've had some great stuff in previously from Tahiti and Belize and Mauritius. So um, yeah, keep in touch guys and let us know. Time for Tech of the Week and another new bike. Now Steve, have you ever had a rally in your lifetime? Uh, what? Grifter? I have, have I had a rally? I had Is this a, a catch question? I had, I had loads neutral of gear. I had loads of rallies. I had um, I actually started riding on a chipper. Yeah. Uh, then I went on to a striker. No, actually, I got a striker from the tip when I was older. <laughs> Uh, had a commando, three-speed commando, which I used to make little uh, tracks around the woods. Sounds old. I did downhill. I did downhill on a commando when I was eight. What about a Kodiak IE, Steve? Was it? Uh, so this is the rally, so Kodiak IE. Uh, the rally is quite big in America now. Yeah. Not so much in the UK. No. But this looks is like, looks like quite a good value bike. That yeah. Way. Beginner to intermediate, intermediate level riders, saying yeah. that I think it's. How uh, much is that? It's coming at four thousand six hundred dollars. So not right. super cheap. It's got the Bosch motor. SRAM NX, as we talked about already. The drivetrain yeah. on there. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go wrong with the Bosch Performance Line CX. So there you go. Range of sizes, good price. Yeah, yeah. Check out, check out the Rally Kodiak. Kodiak, yeah. Alaska, right? An island in Alaska. Used to be. Time for climb of the week, Steve. It's hot in here. It's this hot one. in here. It this is really is, hot in here. This is hot. He's flying <laughs> up here. This a is wooden, Christian in Germany. A wooden step challenge. Look at the pace of this and the cadence. So this is a new one on me. I always try and push quite a big Holy gear. Holy moly. He's flying. Absolutely pinning it. But that, those steps, that's not going to be possible in the wet. He's made light work of that though, hasn't he? Yeah, nice one, Christian. Good action. Absolutely flying. Don't forget to keep your climb of the week coming, whether it's steps, concrete steps, wooden steps, rubber steps, indoors, outdoors, wet, dry, cold, wet, send them in, just down here. Now, we've got some e-bike action from the Himalayas here. No, this, we've moved on to where in the world. Nice, I like this. Where in the world? And of course, we need the globe. Right. So this is Imtiaz Patel in the Himalayas. See, I told you it's all about it's all about India. That looks like well, it's a fat, definitely a fat let's bike. Let's spin the globe to India. Where are we? Obviously, you want to know where in hell in the world it is. So here we are, India this week. I reckon he's got a bolt-on e-bike kit on this fat bike, and he's strapped on yeah. loads of bits and bobs, and he's going out for an adventure by looks of it. But it's nice to see that it, uh, e-bikes are actually taking hold. I mean, we get. Every week, emails from all over the world. I uh, had an email from Belize this week, from Mauritius, uh, from India. It's, it's honestly, it's getting everywhere. The net is spreading on e-bikes. Okay, moving on to South Africa. Uh, the guys down there, uh, Neil Kemp has been having some good fun with his mates on the Two Rivers Trail. Check What's purple mean? Two Rivers, one purple. Purple route. What's I quite like interesting it. with this is that he's got some outputs on the side of the display there. Have you got any idea how that works? Uh, yeah, it's coming from the camera, I think. But he's right. got his heart rate, so he's buzzing along at 154 BPM. It's not bad. Yeah, right. Going down to 2% grade. Yeah. Got the wattage coming up there, 180 watts. 20 200 watts. An hour. Yeah. Nice. nice, nice. Nice one, Neil. Right, Don, let's get into the bike vault. Okay. Cool, us, cool us down with some action from all of us. I will do. This is Thomas Christensen in Hemsedal, Norway. Isn't that a ski resort, Hemsedal, I think? Uh, yeah. Riding is Scott Genius. For my, for me, we're, okay, we're straight into photo mode here now. No, I like it because Adventure. the bike is underneath the, the kind of first horizon there, which gives you a clear look at the bike I bet. and the mountains in the background. Well, that's what I think. I bet that's an epic place to go and ride your e-bike around there. Which is what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, let's do it. So, but that... no trails though. Is this the wilderness? Should we be riding on, but you know, there's obviously going to be a trail there. Yeah, you might. wouldn't be just riding across a bog, right? I love it. Thomas, would you be riding across a bog? I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's nice. I wouldn't go somewhere with this snow. Why not? Because I want to go somewhere hot from going on holiday. Maybe he lives in Norway. Paul Needham, Cutgate. Well, this Cutgate. is in the UK, right? Yeah, it's a specialised, is that a Knievo? Or yeah, Levo? again, that's a nice composition. You can see the bike and you leave the sky and horizon above it. I know it's a super nice bike. Super nice then. Oh, check it out. I've ridden one of these as well. The Mondraker. Can I just stop you there? Go on. It's a lot easier doing this with you than it is with Ashton. He is so finicky. See, yeah, I, know. No, I was going to say pinicky. Is that pinicky, different? finicky. Yeah. Right, <laughs> Nils Erik. Back in Norway. What does that say? Matheson Kongsberg, Norway. Uh, don't know. That what? bike is a Mondraker, right? I forgot what they're called. 
Monrick, Monrick my robot. E Crusher. That's it. E Crusher. Crazy looking bike. A I massive love, carbon down tube. I love that background. So it's my turn. I'm gonna have to give that a super nice. Well, I think it's a super nice bike, so I agree anyway. Yeah. Shimano, noticeably on that. Most, yeah, yeah. Pretty many Shimano. Ooh. Uh, Matt Reese. Hold on, I guess I've got to introduce this one. So from Matthew Reese, uh, Beast of the Brin Trail in Margam Forest. That Tidy. Is, funny enough, that is where Martin Ashton lives. All right. South Wales. That is a. Uh, we'll say, say hello to Martin for you. Blue phase specialised carbon Levo with, with some nice graphics. And pink bits. That, that is nice. That's not pink. We are about you. Colour this purple. Yeah. Pretty fancy that, isn't it? Super nice. Yeah, super nice. Some upgrades in there. And finally, Martin Frith. Martin, I'm really sorry. You've been trying for months and months and months and months to get your bike in the bike vault, and there it is. There oh. it is. Color coordinated, coordinated. So there's only one way this is going down. Is that right? There's only one way this Blue is going. Blue black Levo. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. JP Reader. What did you say? Ar Arapuk. Arapuk Forest Mountain Bike Park, New Zealand. <sighs> so, I mean, I mean, come on. It looks like Wales come to on. me, to be honest. But come on. It's lovely. Huh? Love, lovely. Super nice. Super nice. Right, Yari Vetkula from Finland. I'm on telling his... you, there's a lot of action in Scandinavia yeah. on e-bikes. Focus Sam. When are we going to get an invite to Scandinavia to ride e-bikes? Well, I'm told you, Steve, but huh? I might be going soon. Are you serious? I'm not being <laughs> <laughs> so he's got the focus, but that, he's just got the one battery. So this is one of those mm -hmm. you can bolt on yeah. your second battery. Well, you know, maybe he's just doing short loops. Yeah, it's no problem. I like it. It's a cool yeah. bike. Yeah, kind uh, of another super nice, surely. No, all right then. We'll hang fire for that. Oh, keep going. We had that. You've seen that's the bike. Had that. Nice. GT. We don't get these in the UK, do we? Jeff yeah. Wilson in Queenstown. Guys, if you're sending your photographs in, make sure they're landscape, not portrait, because right. they simply do not work. Here's a photo shot. Yeah. I'm more interested in the bike, to be honest. Okay, GT, we don't have many GTs. We don't get Wasn't Hans Ray on a GT? We had to guard it. Yeah, it does. Mm. He's actually on a trip in Lavinia at the minute on a hidden, into a hidden valley. Oh. Check out his Instagram. Awesome. He loves an e-bike, does Hans. He does all Hans, yeah. That's nice, cool bike. I bet Queenstown's a good spot to go riding on your e-bike. Yeah. What's Dave that? Wiley, Loughborough. I don't know what bike that is. I don't either. It's green. That's a voodoo, is it? Ah, of course, the voodoo. That's a good value. That's a good. Everyone, if you talk about um, affordable e-bikes, quite an affordable bike. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. 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 Ooh. Dublin, going over to Ireland. Yeah. Massey Woods. This is Alan Redmond's Mondraker. The day and come the hour, come the power and the glory. Is this, this is rugby in it? Yeah. Uh, Ireland beat um, Australia on the weekend to win the series. Sorry, sorry, I got to chuck it in there. What series is that? Uh, it's a test, test series against Australia, oh two, two, one. Yeah. What, what are you thinking about the Mondrake? The bike, here? yeah, that's not a crusher, though, right? What's that? Is that Foxy? Uh, yeah, what's that bottle doing there? Uh, well, right. That's a hard bit of rock to tackle, isn't it? They're long, aren't they? Mondrake mm -hmm. is always long, but that looks super long to me. That's gonna be slippery, slippery stream bed there. Nice or super nice? It's nice. Nice. And that takes us out of the bike vault this week. Love seeing your bikes. Love seeing the bikes. Keep sending and, them. Uh, keep sending them. And I know some of you are going to get a bit anxious that your bike's not turned up on the vault yet, but they're all logged and they will all make it on the bike vault for scrutiny by myself, the Don, Martin, yeah. or somebody new coming on the show in the next few weeks. Yeah. Teaser. Like it. Yeah. Right, Steve, I'm out of the loop on EMBM. What's coming up soon? Well, I tell you what's coming up, Don. We've been talking about where's the ultimate place to ride. Uh, last week, we went into deepest mid Wales. And you got us. We've got a camp in feature coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound good. Honestly, you've got to tune into that at the end of the week on Sunday for a feature. I like it. It's out there. Let's keep the debate going on that speed limit and click over there for the mm. is 25k pH too slow? Did you really mean that earlier when you said it is? Oh. Too slow. I think it's a little bit too slow. Right, let's keep the debate going. Hit the button to subscribe and give us a thumbs up.